Good morning, everybody. We'd like to welcome you to Woodhaven Baptist Church with our worship service today. Uh, it is a great day in the Lord, uh, even though it's a little cloudy and, and out this morning as we're recording. Uh, but I would like to say one thing real quick. Thank you very much to whoever invited all of our guests today. We will show you our guests a little later, uh, but it is awesome to look out and see our church family with us this morning. But we'd like to invite you to just worship with us and, and uh, click on the link. There will be stuff there for our music, um, as well as the lyrics and the um, um, guidelines for this morning's service. So I hope that it blesses your heart. Uh, we'd like to have you continue to join in with us, whether it be on Facebook, uh, on our website, or through the uh, email that I'll be sending out a little later with the link on YouTube. Um, and if you have any questions, please contact the church during the week. We are here on a limited basis, but we do check the email and the phone. But we just look forward to worshiping with you this morning. And may God bless your heart for what's in store today.
song, Here's My Heart, Lord. I just pray that you just can close your eyes right where you are, your living room, your dining room, your kitchen with your kids and your family, and just really just speak to the Lord this morning and give him your heart. Give him your life, for he is good in all of these things that's going on right now. Just focus on him. Put your attention on him and just give him your whole heart this morning.
love you. We just thank you for the day that you've given us, God. It's just an awesome, awesome opportunity to be able to come back into your house and uh, worship. And Lord, as we come today, as, as our church family may not be here with us in presence, Lord, they're out there in spirit praying for us today. But Lord, most of all, I hope that the song that was just sang rings true in every one of our hearts, and that is, here's my life, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. I pray that hearts have been given to the Father because without it, it's a dismal, dismal, dreary eternity. So I pray today that as the message is brought forth, and Lord, you hide your speaker behind the cross. Let it be your words heard, not mine. But Father, may it bring glory to you, for you are worthy. For we love you, we praise you, we lift these things to you in the sweet, precious, and holy name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. All right, as we get transitioned over, uh, I want to once again welcome everybody to Woodhaven Baptist Church as we bring our weekly service to you uh, through... Uh, YouTube or electronic format today or Facebook or however you might be watching us today. It is an honor and a privilege uh, to be able to be here with you. And before the end of the video here, we're going to take and flip the camera for just a minute. Um, and uh, in, in just a little bit, Matt, in just a little bit. Uh, I'm taking side directions here uh, from my director. And, uh, but we want to show you uh, just an honest uh, little treat that we've got this morning as we come in. Um, I know Alan had to put together a sermon and send it in and has to have it uh, critiqued a little bit. And as he came in the other night and videoed, it was just blank. And it's hard to be up here and see um, empty pews. It's really tough. And any pastor or anybody that is currently doing a, um, a, a Zoom meeting or a um, whatever format you may be doing and broadcasting, uh, some pastors are still doing it directly from the church and from the pulpit rather than at home. Um, it, is, uh, it can be a little bit discouraging, but, so, but I want you to do something with me this morning. Just close your eyes, let your imagination Kind of pick up, be careful some of y'all. I, I, I know you very well. Don't let your imagination go that crazy. But imagine you're sitting in your normal seat in the sanctuary beside whoever it is you're normally with. And we've spoken this morning. We've, we've, we've shared pleasantries. And I'm going to bring forth the message this morning. Uh, again, be lifting up all of those. Your prayer list will be coming out. Uh, so uh, be looking for that in an email. But I, uh, I want to ask you some, some pretty simple questions this morning. Um, and it's in dealing with comfort. Comfort, just simple comfort. You know, comfort can be brought about in many different ways. Comfort can be brought about in uh, food. Now, you know, hey, look, this old boy loves him some comfort food. I mean... They ain't nothing like a piece of fried chicken, some good old baked beans or coleslaw. Uh, oh, I mean, we could go on and on. Pinto beans, cornbread and onion, a little bit of milk. Come on now. Uh, they, uh, they ain't nobody sitting here but Alan and he's back there shaking me. There you go, brother. That's an amen right there. But comfort, comfort can be brought about in, in another way too. I know I have. I still have an old baby blanket that was made for me and given to my mother at her baby shop. Now, of course, I don't sleep with it no more because it would probably disintegrate. It, it, it's, you know, it's got a little age on it. But it brings comfort that I know that I still have that. A comfort in an old t-shirt. Just something, an old comfortable pair of boots. Those of you that, that might do a little bit of working and walking, I know y'all can, can testify to a comfortable pair of boots that just you put them on, man, they, they fit your feet. You've done stretched them out where they need to be stretched and they ain't all up on your toes. And you, you know, it's comfort. But I want to bring something to talk to you this morning 
about how comfort originally came about, where it originally came from, and where the original source and the continuing source is this morning. And if you have a copy of God's Word, go ahead and open it up and, and we'll let you get started with that. We're going to be in the book of Psalms this morning. Uh, it is going to be Psalm 119. And we're going to concentrate on just a few verses, uh, verses 73 through 76. Psalm 119, verses 73 through 76. Uh, you get there, just say amen. I want to give you a minute. So we'll go ahead and I'll begin to read that. Uh, let's see what God's word says. Your hands made me and formed me. Give me understanding so that I can learn your commands. Those who fear you will see me and rejoice. I, for I put my hope in your word. I know, Lord, that your judgments are just and that you have afflicted me fairly. Listen real close right here. May your faithful love comfort me as you promised your servant. May your faithful love comfort me as you promised your servant. See, that's where comfort comes from. Comfort comes from a promise that was made by God in many different ways. And we're going to look at how that comfort comes about in three different ways this morning. But I want you to think about the comfort that God brings you. Sometimes when you uh, seem so unconsolable in times of worry, in times of concern, in times of distress, or just plain stress, times of stress, you know, times like today and today's times that are going on. There's a lot of stress that's happening. But can I tell you and share something with you this morning? God has got the comfort for that today. Somehow we can look back and we're going to see how God has got this comfort covered. Okay. So as I bring you the message to you this morning, I want to share comfort in three ways. First of all, Let's take a look at something here. Comfort from God the Father. Comfort from God the Father. Comfort from God the Father is in His Word. It comes from His Word. And we can look at that. Let's, let's go back just a minute. Let me, uh, let me get flipped over here just for a second. I'm going to go back into the psalm. And, uh, because I had already flipped over to my next verse. But Psalm 119 in verses 49 and 50. Listen to this. Psalm 49 and 50. Listen to what God says right here. Remember your word to your servant. You have given me hope through it. Listen to this. Listen, listen, we're close now. This is my comfort in my affliction. Your promise has given me life. God's promise has given us life. What comfort is that? You know, examples of, uh, of this has, has come through life and the, his word brings us comfort through all the examples through time, whether it be time past, time present, or time future, because the comfort that God is bringing us and the uh, a, Surroundings and all the circumstances that we are facing today have been faced by people in the past. And they're being faced in the present. And they'll also be faced in the future. But God's word is eternal and God's word does not change. It can bring the same comfort that it brought Moses and it can bring the same comfort to us today. But there, it, there's, there's a but. Or an if, if you want to ease that in there. If you open it up and read it and meditate on it, pray about it, God's word can bring comfort that nothing else can in times. You know, being a pastor, probably one of the hardest things that I, I, that I have to do um, is a, a funeral service. Because people are at their most 
vulnerable point in their life. They're weak at that point because grief has come upon them. Some are a little overwhelmed by grief, depending on the circumstances. But there is nothing that I could possibly say immediately, me personally, that can instantly relieve that grief and bring them comfort. But God's word can comfort, some, comfort you and me in such times. There are, there are, I don't know how many scriptures that can be brought forward in times of that. And God's word just speak to you and bring about a comfort that nothing else can. Soothe your heart. Kind of mellow the mind. And calm the spirit like nothing else. And in doing so, we have to look at it this way. Think back when you were a kid for just a moment. Think back for just a moment. And everything was crazy or you were hurt. And well, this might not be the greatest of example because fathers usually didn't comfort very well when things happened. It was usually mama. But just think about, you know, when, when something gone crazy and, and, and you would hear your father speak to you. It would bring about a calming sense. Just for daddy to say, it's okay. It'll be all right. Best case. He'd wrap his arms around you and just tell you, I love you. God's word does that. It tells us the Father speaks through his word and gives his love through his word. But we have to, we have to take part in that. It, it requires some action. And it requires us to move. We have to open the book. We have to open our minds. We have to open our hearts and let the word in so it can bring us comfort. And not only... Is that comfort brought about by the Father through His Word? But comfort is also brought about by the Son. Comfort by the Son. And how does the Son do it? Well, if we look back in history, we can tell how comfort was brought back by the Son. Because I'm going to tell you, it was brought back by His works. Jesus brought more comfort, not so much by His Word, but by His works for those that He was... Um, around and surrounded by and physically able to um, be in presence with his more uh, his comfort more came from his works now you say how is that listen just in the gospels alone okay just in the gospels alone there are 37 miracles mentioned 37 now do you think for just a moment as he performed these miracles, he didn't bring about a sense of comfort to all these people that he was surrounded by and the ones that he, not only did he touch, but those that touched him. His work didn't require him to do anything but walk through the crowd and for someone to touch the hem of his garment. His work. But if you go in and you continue reading though, not everything and not all of his works were all written in Scripture. Because John 21, 25 tells us that many miracles were never written down. So 37 is just a drop in the bucket. But you know, and it, it goes from everything from, uh, I, I got a list here. Because I, I had to sit down and read that. And it was amazing. You know, with the first one being turning the water into wine. To the last one that was in, in chronological order was the second catch of fish in uh, the Sea of Tiberias, being the last one. But in between that, he cured leprosy. He gave sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, a voice to the mute. He did exorcisms. He drove evil spirits out. Now get this, he raised the dead multiple times. Not the same one, but multiple times. You know, bringing comfort. Now, in his comfort, some folks don't didn't quite understand his comfort. Mary and Martha, they were upset with Jesus. 
He didn't bring them comfort quick enough. Why? Because their brother Lazarus died. He died. And Jesus didn't get in a hurry because, hey, he, he knew. He had this under control. But when he did arrive, and they were all upset. You should have been here sooner. You could have saved my brother. You let my brother die. And, and, and being in that world of grief, Jesus, you know what? And he couldn't just say, come out, because ain't no telling who would have come out. But he called him specifically by name, Lazarus. Come out. And he rose the dead. But Jesus' comfort just permeated through the lands because of his works. And get this. All of the miracles and the works that Jesus did, look at the short time span in which he did it. Three years of ministry. Three years. Now, his miracles, here, see, and here's the thing, folks. A lot of people miss this. So I want you to really listen to what I'm telling you this morning. Jesus' miracles did not always involve physical acts. Okay? It was through his works. Now, works, don't, don't let works and acts confuse you. But let me, let me tell you something. Through his actions, I truly believe there were some Gentiles and some Romans that were brought about unto salvation simply because of his actions or sometimes lack thereof. Think about this a minute. Think about Calvary for just a minute. Think about Calvary for just a moment. Or better yet, or better yet back up just a day or two here. Think about in the Garden of Gethsemane. Now there were multiple soldiers there. Peter, being Peter, and being a, a, a man with anger, what did he do? He lashed out, cut the ear of the centurion off that was going to arrest Jesus, okay? Jesus, what a miracle right there. He healed him, okay? That's the one that he, that it was a physical act. He healed but think about all of those that were standing around that were there to arrest him as well. And Jesus didn't say a word. He healed the man. What impact did that have on the rest of them's life moving forward? We may not know until we get to glory ourselves. And we can talk with some of those folks because I guarantee you there was some conversion that day. And then the conversion that may have taken place on Calvary that we don't know about. But we know man's heart because why we are one. We know the heart. But to see him die the death that he took, the pain, the anguish, all of the punishment that he took, and yet not, he didn't lash out. He didn't get even. He didn't call down a legion of angels to pull him from the cross. He died a sinner's death that we deserve today, not him. But what comfort he brought to those then. What comfort. And even to his mother and those he was closest to. Because he did what he said he would do, which was a prophecy fulfilled. Those that knew him knew that prophecy had been fulfilled and knew what was coming to follow, which was, and that brought comfort to them. And then moving forward a few days and after the resurrection and before the ascension, what comfort was brought to the disciples when he reappeared to them and to others? That in itself is a miracle. But he reappeared. And what comfort, what greater comfort through his action then has brought comfort to those of us today. He has brought forth the comfort of salvation today. 
through what he did two centuries ago, or, or, or excuse me, uh, millenniums ago, not centuries. This country is only a couple, three centuries old now. But what he did way back then is still bringing comfort through his actions today is bringing comfort. Comfort for those then because a new prophecy had been fulfilled and comfort for those now because we now have a path to heaven through Jesus Christ. What comfort that should bring to our hearts today. No matter what we've done, no matter how bad we think we are, no matter what crime or sin that we may be uh, due for punishment, Jesus made a way. Doesn't that bring your spirit and your soul comfort this morning? So through his work, Jesus brought comfort. Through the word, God the Father brings comfort. But then there's a third one. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings about a comfort that um, is kind of personal. It's personal. Because it brings about a comfort in each one of us in a different way. Because we are different. The Holy Spirit works differently with us, in us, and through us. I'm going to go back in just a moment and read something to you in a, in a series of scripture. And it's going to kind of be backwards to what I said this morning. But just hang on because i got something coming for you. Okay? But the Holy Spirit comforts us through his presence. Look over, turn over into John for just a minute. We're going to start with John 14, verses 15 through 17. Okay? John 14, verses 15 through 17. And we're going to kind of camp out right in here in John here in just a minute. So just kind of put your thumb right there and hang on, okay? But the scripture says, if you love me, you will keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. For he is the spirit of truth. The word is unable to receive, the world is unable to receive him because it doesn't see him or know him. But you do know him because he remains with you, catch this, and will be in you will be in you. Now let's, let's take a look at this just a moment. The Holy Spirit's indwelling within us. So let's think about that. What is the Holy Spirit? It's the third part of the Trinity. Which means Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit dwelling within us because three are one, right? So if we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we have the indwelling of God the Father himself. But, you know, they've all worked in different ways. And I love the fact, if you back up just a minute to, to verse 16, and take a look at that just a minute. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor. Now this is Jesus talking, okay? Okay. Because Jesus knew he would not stay with man forever. But he is telling us that God the Father is going to give us the counselor that would be with us forever. Not only in the physical realm, but in the spiritual realm. Even the presence of the Holy Spirit will be indwelling and be with us. Isn't that comfort? Doesn't that bring you comfort? That he's going to be with us forever. 
But there is a but. Go back to verse 17 just a moment. He is the spirit of truth. Okay? The spirit of truth. The world is unable to receive him. Why? Because it doesn't see him or know him. You've got to know God to receive God. And I'm not talking about in this little, this little pea rattling around up here in this box car. I'm talking about know God in your heart. Accept him in. Give the Holy Spirit a place of residence. Not just know him in your head. Head knowledge is wonderful. But heart knowledge is great. And in doing so, he has an indwelling of the Holy Spirit within you, which should bring you comfort beyond, just peace beyond all understanding. And that, that, that phrase is said a lot in a funeral service. May the Holy Spirit bring you peace beyond all understanding. Why? Because we can't understand how the Holy Spirit brings about such a peace in such a gloomy time in our life. How can the Holy Spirit, how can God bring about a comfort in times such as this when there are so many that are sick, so many that are afflicted, so many that are dying today? How can God bring us comfort? Well, it's called the Holy Spirit today. And God is still bringing us, God the Father is still bringing us comfort through his word. God the, God the Son is still bringing us comfort through his actions and his works and his acts of miracles from many years ago. He's still bringing it today. How? Calvary. That's still ringing today. And then you've got the Holy Spirit. You've got the, the, the Holy Spirit here, present with us that would bring us power. Listen, folks, if we would be honest and we would truly accept what God is telling us in, in, in this little minute mind that we have, and we accepted what Jesus himself said, we were told we could have power greater than he. Now, I'm not saying we are God's, but we've got God's power within us if we have the indwelling and the comfort of the Holy Spirit to know it's true. God's word is true. So we've got to think about it this way. All right? God's word, I want to go back to the very beginning here just a moment. And this is a personal thing right here. So I want you to think about this for a moment. I want you to think about this. It's personal. Verse 15, back in John tells us, if we will keep his commands. If we'll keep his commands. He'll dwell with us through the Holy Spirit. Okay? But to comfort us now is with his presence in us, through us, and around us. Because we see the presence of God. And this is how we're going to see the presence of God until Jesus comes back. The Holy Spirit is our comforter, our counselor, our power. I want to read, I, I want to share something with you. It's just a little story, but um, let, let, let's, let's do something real quick. I want to read through, and this is going backwards, but listen to, what I, listen to this whole series of Scripture, starting in John 14, verse 15, okay? We're going to read through a little more Scripture right here for a moment, and then, and then we'll take off here. It says, if you love me, you'll keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. He is the Spirit of truth. For the world is unable to receive him because it doesn't see him or know him. But you do know him because he remains with you and will be in you. Now, let's, let's read on a little further right here. Let's go to 18. I will not leave you as orphans. I am coming to you. In a little while, while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you too also will live. And on that day, you will know that I am in 
my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. The one who has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me, and the one who loves me will be loved by my Father. I also will love him and will reveal myself to him. So what have you got going on here, man? Let's take a look. It, it is exactly what I said earlier through God. We look at this. God the Father comforts through his words. That's verses 22 through 24. Let's look at them just a moment. Let's look at 22 through 24. You got it, brother? Okay. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it you're going to reveal yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus answered, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. My Father will love him, and he will come to him and make our home with him. And the one who doesn't love me will not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine. Get this. Not mine, but it's from the Father who sent me. So God is trying to comfort us through his word, and though he used Jesus to speak his word. The words were not Jesus. They may have come out of his mouth, but it was the word of the Father. The word of the Father. That should bring us comfort that this, all of this, from the I am in, to the A-M-E-N in the end. From the end of the beginning to the amen. God's word tells us and should bring us comfort. Why? Because he's got the answers to all of our questions. He's got the solutions to all of our problems. If. If. We read it. If. And you say, well, the comfort comes from the word from the Father and the Son. Now look at 18 through 21 right here. Look at verses 18 through 21. How's it comfort? Again, I will not leave you as orphans. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You will live too. And on that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. The one who has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my Father. I also will love him and reveal him or reveal myself to him. Comfort through the actions of Jesus, by keeping his word, by keeping the Father's word, he shows his comfort to us. And then last but not least, as we go through the Holy Spirit, that's verses 15 through 17. See, we're going backwards here. We always hear the Trinity being spoken of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So that's the way I kind of laid it out this morning in my message was that way. But see, Scripture Right here, it, it, it messed me up when I was reading that. It, it did it backwards. It starts out with the Holy Spirit at the lower end and winds up at the Father. See? So you got you, you to gotta kind of hang on here. But what comfort? By the Holy Spirit, by his presence. That's 15 through 17. Again, if you love me, you will keep my commands. If. If, you hear that? If, you'll keep my commands. But he's going to indwell with us and stay with us and love us no matter what. Now, let's take a break here just a moment and we'll get this all wrapped up. How good is your memory? Mine is not getting better. I'm just going to be honest with you. Mine is not getting better. Uh, does anybody else walk in a room and forget why they walked in there? I've done it. I'm still doing it. Um, you know, we memorize things from school and school age and tests. 
But how many of you remember some of the stuff that you took tests on? Man, as soon as that test was over, that stuff went poof. It was gone. And it shouldn't be that way because we took a test for a reason. You know, I think, I truly believe that once we passed our driver's test, all that written information went right out the door. And we've got driver's license so we can drive any way we want to, however we want to, wherever we want to. No, it don't work that way. We still have laws and rules to abide by, but our memories, you know, I'm thinking to myself, I remember taking my driver's test. I don't remember what it said about how far apart exactly to stay from a car. I think it's a car length for every 10 mile an hour. I'm sure I'll get a note on that before it's over with. But if it is, okay, I'm, I'm good. But then, the information that we forgot, we just wiped it out of our mind after we took the test. Because we have this amazing, as human beings, we have this amazing um, propensity to forget. We really do. We, and, and the amount of the information that is demanded that we maintain today um, is unbelievable. But I think technology has also helped us in that area to where we forget more now than we ever have. Why? Because we don't have to remember it. I'll give you a prime example. How many of you actually know your own phone number without looking at your phone? I don't call myself. That's usually the reply. What's your phone number? Oh, I don't know. And they'll go digging around and they'll start punching on their phone. Oh, yeah, there it is. You don't have to remember your own phone number. Okay, here's the better part of that. What's your wife's phone number other than speed dial wife? Or her name? Are your children's telephone numbers? Do you know them by heart? No, because you look at your phone and you go, oh, Tiffany, oh, Hannah, Matt, Jamarcus, whoever I'm calling, I'm calling them because I have their name in my phone, not their number in my head. Because if something, if, and, and I'm gonna be honest, and y'all better be too, for if you were ever in an accident and you had to tell an EMS, Give me a contact number. Your phone got broke. I'm done. Call the church. Because they got all of those phone numbers. Okay? Yeah, I mean, come on. It's just because we have such a, 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 an amount of information and everything that is just fighting for our attention and for our memory space and retention. Um, you know, and the thing about it is there was an article written in Time Magazine back in two, uh, 2015, I believe it was. And the title of the article is just simply this. You now have a shorter attention span than a goldfish. Amen. I'm just going to raise my hand and call amen. Because the tendency to forget can be seen in our, not only in our personal lives, but in our spiritual lives. We tend to forget God's comfort. Because we tend to forget God's word. And in his word is his promise. We tend to forget the acts of Jesus and the works of Jesus because we got our minds focused on something else. We tend to forget. We tend to forget exactly what it was he did on Calvary for us and why he did it. We tend to forget that. And we tend to forget that we have something more powerful as followers and believers in Christ, we have something more powerful living and dwelling within us than we could ever imagine that should bring us the most comfort in the world. What do we have to fear? What can, I, I, I want to put it this way, and, and I pray this brings you comfort this morning. What brings you more comfort to know there ain't nothing out there that can harm you outside the will of God? Death may take this old body, but I won't be dead. I'll be more alive than I've ever been in my life. Because I will be spiritually alive and in the presence of God. I believe that. Why? Because I believe, because of Jesus, what Jesus did for me. I believe that. Deuteronomy 29 Kind of gives a summation of that. Only be careful and watch yourself closely so that you do not forget the things 
your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Did you catch that? Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. We've seen the comfort of God in our lives. We've seen the word. We've seen the comfort of Jesus in our lives as followers and believers in that what a relief when we fell to our knees and we accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. What a burden was lifted. We saw, we see that. We see the change in people's lives. And then to see the change, knowing we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, which means we have an indwelling of Jesus, which means we have an indwelling of God the Father. So think about it. Think about it. So when there's sickness, financial struggles, uh, or any other calamity that may come along in life, keep this in mind. We live in a fallen world. That's how that 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 that's Satan's bullets that he's shooting at us. Okay, we live in a fallen world, so we got to remember where our comfort comes from. It comes from God the Father. God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Because the easiest way to do that, folks, and to share that is through your testimony, your personal testimony. Because what God has done for you cannot be denied. He saw. He, you just got to tell folks, reflect on what God has done for you. And this is the good part about this. Not only are you sharing and reflecting of, of what God's done for you, but you are bringing about a sense of comfort to somebody else by letting them know, hey, if God can do this for you, God can do this for me. If God can reach down, and, and as you share that story, as God can reach down in, in the way he did it, he touched me, changed my life. I guarantee you I've got friends and buddies and family that are looking and going, if he can do that for him, I'm going to be a piece of cake. Let him. Learn that. Learn that comfort. So let's close in prayer. And uh, I, I just pray that you allow God, you got to allow him to bring you that comfort. Because it requires action on your part. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We just thank you for the word that we saw this morning as we dove in just into this, just this little shallow pool of your word. Lord, just let it flow all over us. Let us not forget, you know. Let us not get into such a state to where we, we, we keep our eyes off of you and we start looking at the struggles and the circumstances and the calamities in the world that is, is in this world because it is a fallen world and we are, we are a cleansed, saved, new creation. Let us, let, us, let us just dwell in that comfort of who we are and who you are and who you have made us to be. For God, we love you. And I pray that if there's one out there today that does not know this comfort that I speak of, that does not know you as Lord and Savior. Father, I pray they reach out to somebody today. Don't wait. Do it now. And then they can go on and share the comfort with somebody else about what God has done for them. For we love you and we praise you and we just give you honor and glory for you are worthy. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in today. And remember, God loves you, so do we. And we're going to show you a real quick, um, the, the camera might shake a little bit here. Uh, I don't know how this is going to transition. But I want to show you our uh, participants today and uh, um, our, our church audience, our church family today. And again, 
whoever did this, thank you very much. God bless you.